Hello, hello. How is it going, everyone? Eulier Gonzalez, again, here. Looking now at this roadmap, which is part of the lead code, which is now the need code, which is a applications that allow us to improve not only our technical communications, but also how can we use the computer science concept and tools for develop a pattern recognition to solve real life problems using this common data structure and algorithm. So by going into array, hashing, two pointer stacks, sliding window, I didn't know about that, link list and binary search as a way to now get ourselves familiar with this particular kind of problem which is now will be is the entry point of what we have to do, especially if you're going to get in or you're going to get hired by a company, uh, especially those companies that are competitive. And just so you want to actually find companies that actually are solving this interesting uh, problems. So because the methodology here is with, we're going to take is 45 minutes to solve one or two problems, depending how easy it is. And now also the idea is to describe is our thinking process, which is something that a lot of company are looking for, which is the analytical skills, how is your thinking process, your technical communication based on your approach. Can I implement that? Okay, based on your description, can I implement that? Uh, also is the good engineering practice as a way to look at now what is the common topic here, uh, especially when it comes to actually solve par particular problems uh, like an array and hashing and all of this. All right. And also is the soft skills as a way to have patience with yourself, be empathetic with yourself and others. And last but not least is the domain specific knowledge. So let's get into this. We already solved this, these two particular problems here. Let's jump to the two sum here, but uh, let me actually jump into the elite code for that. So, uh, this is now using arrays and hash. So arrays and hash are data structures that allows us to solve particular problems, right? So for example, counting the, num the number of elements uh, or grouping the number of elements as well. So pretty much you can think of this like when you are in, when you look at inventory of shoes or foods or even in your own house, Okay, uh, you want to have now a record of how many of that thing you, you have that. And, and then ask questions based on that data that you gather or you have that. So we got is a two sum, okay? Uh, and there's some hints, okay? Giving an array of integer numbers and an integer target return indexes of the two number such as they add up to the target. Okay. So for example, you may assume that each input will have exactly one solution. Okay. Okay. And then you may not use the same element twice. You can return the answer in any order. So given the an, error, an, error, an array of this and the target, find those index Okay, so find those index whose value match the target. That's quite interesting. That's a very, 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 very interesting. Yep. That's a very, very interesting. And also something that you can apply to your daily life. So the output is that, hey, well, the index 0 and 1 actually is those who allow to do that. So what will be is 
um, the particular, this is the solution, the editorial, no. So what would be the particular approach here? Okay, and then you want to start with, with the input. And also I want to, you know what, uh, use this. Use this particular, exactly, the intuition. Okay, I want to start is with this. So where's my intuition here? The intuition that we got is the approach. Okay, and then let's go to analyze is the complexity for that, the complexity, and then the code, right? So we already know what are the inputs and the output, okay? But first, what is our intuition? So we need to, f so the idea here is that given this collection of elements, we want to know which one of those index actually uh, match the target, okay? Uh, exactly. Which one of those index mm -hmm, match the target? Uh, yeah, which return the index of the two numbers such that they add up to the target, okay? So, because it can be several solutions here, but you may assume that each input will have exactly one solution. So, given that, and this constraint, this is our constraint, okay, the idea here is that we can say is, uh, let me grab the first element here, and then I'm going to iterate through all of those elements and add that. That might be one way to do that. Uh, assuming, assuming, assuming that return the index of the two numbers such as they, exactly, return, return indices of the two numbers, exactly, return indices of the two numbers such as they add up to the target. So I'm assuming here that only two indexes they, uh, you may assume that each input will have exactly one solution, which means that these two indices and no more. So that's quite not applicable in real life. Uh, but again, you want this to, you want to um, shrink or you want to narrow down. Uh, I don't think it's narrow than constraint. You want to narrow down uh, if this particular uh, problem. So with that, and if we only have one exact, exactly one solution, we can say is, let me get the first elements of this array, hold it, okay? Um, mm -hmm. Let me get the, okay. So let me let me store the, the so let me get the first elements of that array and then and then let me actually add that with the with all of those elements after that. For example, in the second position, hey, I want you to now see if the sum of these two numbers actually match the target. If it is, we're gonna return those indices. Uh, if it's not, go to the next one, to the next one, to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. So, based on this, so the intuition will be is um, get the first element in the array, okay, and oh, uh, exactly, exactly, intuition. So get the first element in the array. Okay, so this intuition is get the first element in the array and iterate exactly and iterate through and iterate through while exciting iterating through while comparing the first while adding exactly 
while comparing the the sum of the first element with the n with the element at the m nth position right if we got a exactly while comparing the sum of the first elements with the first element of the n position if we got a match uh exactly while comparing the sum of the first target with element of the n position comparing the sum of the first element at the n position with the target if exists return the two indices okay return the two indices what will be the approach of this you may wonder so the approach will be is that so we need to find a way to store this data okay um, we can do is the naive approach uh, the naive approach which is hey let me now store the data store the first element okay store the first element um, in a variable okay store the first element in a variable and yeah store the first elements and iterate iterate mm -hmm. store the first element all right uh and yeah store the store the first element and iterate iterate through uh, iterate through through the array compare the first element plus uh, and the element at the end position at that position okay if that match the target okay if that match the target well return the first and n position index otherwise false you know uh, otherwise otherwise false all right so far so good so far so good so this is the naive approach okay of how can we do that step by step so when it comes to our code it'll be is um well it's going to actually store the first position here uh, and say hey uh, first element okay from our nums at that position okay we're storing that and then we're going to iterate through that right um but i want to iterate is do, 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 do. i'm gonna call here is the uh, mm -hmm. yeah we're gonna say here is the uh, uh the array to iterate that because we're going to start is from the second position right the um mm, so yeah we get this value uh or Another thing is that we do this. Um, we can iterate from that inside of this. We can say cons uh, of the key 
because this is one of the things that specially sp is specific to who the iterator key value of the iterator num okay again so what it's doing here is that using the iterator the iterative protocol which is implementing the iterative uh, from the iterator protocol here uh, the iterator but from the iterator which is follow is the iterator protocol is the iteration protocols okay uh, because he will make use of the iteration protocol so you have is the iterator the iterable protocol that is you now can define is the custom behavior of this iterative uh, you can define is the iter iterative behavior of uh, you can define is you can define or customize is the iterative behavior when you run through an iterable which is in our case is an string is an array uh, or those that implement the iterator protocol okay uh, and then be consumed by the for of syntax and the iterator protocol is just the way of how you can now return sequence of data when a particular function uh, is called specifically the next function you know so this is a way of how you can now produce sequence of data for that so the whole point of this okay is that um we can now have with nums is the key and the values as a way to iterate through that if you don't trust me well um, actually you can show you this for example let's say we got is this element here exactly as num okay let me actually assign this as num okay and using now is the for of syntax where it say hey this is the first element is the key and the value of nums which is something that is going to return from this iterator i want you to actually is show me is the key and the value uh, it says nums is not an iterable uh, interesting 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 is because this is an array of numbers okay because this is an array of numbers those that implement is the iterator protocol is uh, the every is every is entry sorry entry is that it return a new instance of the iterable okay so is entry because num is an array but entries is what return is an iterable protocol is an array iterator okay where we can now access to all of this sequence where we can now access to all of these elements as sequence of data okay and we're gonna get is the key and the value and now this will actually print that as it is this is one of the powerful thing of this you know because what we can do is the following we can say hey if uh, here let's go to define is this say hey let this is the first element as null so you don't have any value here so if uh, key okay uh, is equal to zero what i want you to do is to now set this first element so first element here okay so first elements what you can now hold is this as a key 
because they're using a map here where now all of the unique values, all of the key will be unique. So you can say, hey, I want you to now is first element is not add, is, is add? Not sure. New map, map. Uh, set exactly is set okay is set the key and value so we hold that as the first element so that's great and then we're going to compare that you know by saying hey is the first element okay if the first element that contains the key and the value, all right, uh, mm -hmm. uh, if the first element uh, dot get zero, which is at that position. Also, instead of doing this, we can say is that let's going to consider this as an object, and we're going to do is something like this. So we're going to set is the key for that, followed by this, where now this will be their value. Okay. So if now if the first element, which is zero, um. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Iterate through the array, compare the first elements and the nth elements for that. Another interesting thing is that we can now is... No, it is this one. So we get the first element from that, okay? And here it needs to be a dot entries. We get the first element from that, okay? And then we can say, so if the key is greater than zero, meaning that is the second element, okay? Let me now compare is, let me now sum that. So count sum, or you can say add up. Uh, that, that'll be is the first, first element at the zero position okay which is zero which is zero okay uh, and I want you to get me that element please and let's go to now sum is the current value at that moment if the add up is equal to to the target okay it means that well we are now going to return this which means that we're going to break this we're going to return is the uh, first element and yeah we're going to return is the is the Okay, we're going to return is the first element, okay, which is a zero position, which you can say is a zero position here, uh, followed by the uh, in key at that position. And pretty much that's it, right? Pretty much that's it. If the add-up is equal, another way to actually make to make sure that it's actually is equal is using the object. This is very specific to JavaScript. Add up to target. Okay. It's the same. Okay. Now you can do this. Why we're using this object that is instead of a triple e assignment? 
uh, because you want to make sure that is these values are unique. With triple assignment, the total difference is that for non-negative number or for non-defined non numbers, well, actually is not as expected. It doesn't take in consideration those scenarios. So when we run now this code, and say undefined, hmm, interesting. Okay, the key is greater than zero, which is exactly what it is. So it say, hey, I'm returning is undefined. Well, no problem. Another thing that we can do is that uh, it Well, we can say break. So here, because we are working with, with hash, okay, we can say is this will contain is the two indexes, you know? I'm gonna call this um, uh, the two numbers, okay, or index index number you know index number so the first element will be this okay uh, and the second element okay that's one of the reasons why I prefer to work is with map say new map here because here you can say is hey uh, index number You say, hey, uh, the index number dot set the key, which is zero, uh, and the value at that position, okay? Index number or indexes, uh, or you can say is the indexes, so, indexes number okay or index index value index value okay index value like this or you can call this the key value okay key value where now the first element will be is the first Okay, and now if the key is greater than zero, which is the next one, we're going to say, hey, uh, I want you to now check the value here dot get, right? And that position zero, okay? And plus in add that value. If, if that is true, it means that we're going now to say to the key value set is the key and the value and then break it. Otherwise, in return is uh, that. And return now is the uh, array in this format. The key value get as a way to get the value but I want to get is the index mm -hmm, the keys exactly I want to get now is the keys from that we say a uh, keys return me is the keys from this map and put it into an array 
So if I run this, now this is supposed to work as expected. It say, hey, uh, oh, because we already changed that, that's right, my bad. Mm -hmm. And it say wrong answer, which is zero. Hmm. It's like it never get in here. Uh, wait a single moment. Okay. Is greater or equal than one? Then I want you to run this. So the key, if the key is the greater or equal than one, but it still is not evaluating this. Hmm. Key value dot get at that position plus the value. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's my logic. Okay, it's my logic. Now it's my logic. Mm -hmm. It's because it's my logic here. It's because it's my logic here. Hey, with this, 3, 2 actually makes this. Ah, but this is interesting. Only one, and exactly one. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So my logic here is not quite right. So my logic here is not quite right. So my logic here is not quite right. Yeah, so my logic here is not quite right. It's okay, it's okay. Um, well, no problem. Uh, let me test that, 30, okay, good. Let me actually look is, no, that's okay, it's okay. Let me actually look at this, the video solution. Let's solve leak code one to some, the most popular leak code question. So we're given an input array and some target, in this case nine. And we want to find the two values in this input array that sum to nine. So in this case, it's two and seven. Now we want to return the indices of these two values. So the index of zero of the index of two is zero. The index of seven is one. So we return zero. Because I'm fixing that. It's because my solution just fix the first one and then move on to the others. That's a way to on one. We're guaranteed that there's exactly one solution, so we don't have to worry about not finding a solution and we don't have to worry about multiple solutions. Now the most intuitive way to solve this problem is basically just check every combination of two values and see if they can sum up to our target. So we start at two, we check every combination we can make that includes two. So we scan through the remainder of the array, one, five, three, and check if any of those numbers added to two sums to our target four. In this case, none of them do. 
So next we can repeat the process. Let's check every combination, including one that sums up to target four. So we scan through every element that comes after it, five and three, and we find that one added with three sums up to our target four. Notice that we didn't have to check the values that came before one because we already checked the combination two and one when we were up over here. Remember when we checked every combination with two. So we didn't have to repeat that work down here. We only had to check the numbers that came after one. So the runtime of this algorithm isn't super efficient. This is basically brute force. We're going through the entire array of length n, and we're gonna do that worst case n times for each number. This means that overall worst case time complexity will be O of n squared. So can we do better? Now the thing to notice is that for each number, for example, uh, one, the value we're looking for is the difference between the target and this value. So another way of looking at this, okay. Mm -hmm. One, so we're looking for four minus one, which is equal to three. So that means this is the only value we can add to one that'll e it's because it's using mathematical here. equal the target. So if you now, uh, Mm -hmm. So if you now find a way, okay. If you now with this, you remove the element, you remove at least one element. So what left is now the way of the, is that element exists. Yeah. So we don't have to check every number. We just want to know if three exists. Now the easiest way we can do this, the most efficient, is by making a hash map of every value in our input array so we can instantly check if the value 3 exists. Now let's try the same problem except let's use a hash map this time. Now in our hash map, we're going to be mapping each value to the index of each value. So the index of 2 is 0, the index of 1 is 1, the index of 5 is 2, the index of 3 is 3. So let's so in our hash map we're going to be mapping the value to the index. Now we could add every value in this array into the hash map before we start iterating through it, but there's actually an easier way to do it. If we added the entire array into the hash map initially, then we would get to the value two first, right? We would wanna check does the difference between target four minus this value two, which is equal to two exists in our hash map. And we would find that two does exist in our hash map, but we're not allowed to reuse the same one, right? Because they're both at the same index, we can't use the same value twice. So we would have to compare the index of our current two with the index of the two that's in our hash map. There's actually an easier way to do this though, and it's a little clever, and let me show you how to do it that way. So doing it this clever way, initially we say our hash map is empty. So we get to the value two, first of all, right? And we wanna look for the difference four minus we wanna look at the difference from that minus two value. in our hash map. Our hash map is empty, so we don't find two. So then after we visited this element, then we can add it to our hash map. So now that I'm done visiting it, I'm gonna to move to the second element one. And before I do that, I'm gonna add this value two to our hash map and the index of this value is gonna be zero. Now I'm at one, I'm looking for four minus one, which is three. Exactly. But in my particular case, do we have is this value actually is what we're looking for? I see three isn't in our hash map, but it actually is in our array. So what's the problem? Well, for now, we're gonna say we don't find our find a three. So we add one to our hash map. The index of this one is one. And now we move to the next element, five. Mm I see three isn't in our hash map, but it actually is in our array. So what's the problem? Well, for now, we're gonna say we don't find our find a three. So we add one to our hash map. The index of this one is one. And now we move to the next element, five. We check, does four minus five, uh, does four minus five exist in our hash map? That's negative one, so no, it does not. 
Then we add this 5 to our hash map and its index, which is 2. And we move to the last value in the array, 3. We checked as 4 minus 3 e, uh, exists in our hash map. Now that's 1, so we... So that's 1. So we of course have that 1. Okay. Uh, mm. See, it does exist, right? Right over here. It exi the value exists and its index is 1. So now we found our two values that sum to the target. And we want to return their indexes, their indices, which are going to be 1 and 3. and 3. So with this algorithm, we don't have to in initialize our hash map. It can be initially empty, and then we can just iterate through iterate this through array that. in one path. But it's because we are now comparing with this hash map here, our difference here. Hey, if this element is a difference, uh, so our hash map is a storing is mm -hmm, the difference here. Mm -hmm. So our hash map is a storing is uh, the index of values, but the comparison here is that with the value okay that's a clever way to do it's because the comparison here is mm, i have another mindset so the comparison here is that when you're doing is this okay okay so the comparison here is that when you're doing is this uh you're going to store is on the hash all of your key and value but as long as you have the different oh, okay but the 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 comparison okay the pattern here is the comparison here what are you going to compare here okay what are you going to compare because you can compare is the add-on or the difference here with any of these elements that are in the array Mm -hmm. Now the reason the algorithm can work in that way with just one pass is this. So let's say we had a giant array, right? We know for sure that there are two elements in this array that sum to our target, right? We don't know where they are. They're at some arbitrary location. When we visit the first one of those elements, mm -hmm our hash map is only going to be this portion of the array. It's only going to have the values that came before the first value. So we're going to we're going to notice that the second value that can sum to the target is no is not going to be in our hash map yet. But once we get to the second value, our hash map is going to be this portion. So every value that comes before this, right? So we're going to be guaranteed that once we visit the second yeah, we'll element that sums up to the target, we're going to be guaranteed that the first one is already in our hash map. So we're guaranteed to find the solution. Now, since we only have to iterate through the array once and we're adding each value to our hash map, which is a constant time operation, and we're checking if a value exists in our hash map, which is also a constant time operation, the time complexity is going to be big O of N. We are using extra memory, right? That hash map isn't free, so the memory complexity is also going to be O of N because we could potentially add every value to the hash map. So now let's code the solution. So remember... It's because you are using this particular approach. It's because if you're using this particular approach to solve these specific problems, okay, especially if that you are going to add those two numbers, okay, so the pattern here is that you have now this hash map that you're going to store all of these elements. And then you're going to compare is the difference here. You're going to compare this with the difference here. <laughs> That's pretty clever, bro. <laughs> That's pretty clever. So the approach will, with this will be like this. Okay, so the approach with this will be like this. So the naive approach is, is not storing the first element here, is that in fact is storing 
the key and the key values in a map this data structure okay uh, and when we find the those two elements that actually match that we're going to compare that so iterate through the array and compare exactly and compare is the difference because at the end of the day we're going to store is that and then compare is the difference holy moly exactly so and then compare compare the difference between the the, the element at n position with our um, with our map uh, exactly compare the difference between or in this case the yeah compare the difference between the element compared compare the subtraction of of element at the end position in the array with our map mm, compare the subtraction at the end position okay hey um do we have now that value okay and the value compare the subtraction of elements at the end position in the array and such value okay and query and query in our map if we got the difference because that's all that's what we're doing and query in our map if we got the difference and query in our map if we got the result of mm -hmm. and query in our map if we got the result haha <laughs> i get it and querying or map if we got the result okay and querying and querying or map if we got the result of subtracting the target and the nth position mm -hmm. if we don't okay so if we don't if we don't if we don't have them add them add the value and the key exactly add the value and the key to the map if we if we do if uh, otherwise otherwise add otherwise return the mm, otherwise return okay otherwise return the key or the index of the map and the index of the array mm -hmm. the go okay so what we're gonna do is to store in the key values in the map okay so far so good so now let's going to iterate through this by saying hey i want you to now iterate through the key and value of this iterable which is a num okay 
where here we're gonna get we're gonna get is this um, Count's key value of nums uh, key values okay and what we're gonna do here is well um, check the difference so if the value minus the target okay if the value minus the target uh, exists here, which means is that if that value uh, exists in our key value dot hash, if that exists, okay, what I mean if that doesn't exist, the difference of that so for example in the first element it'll be 2 minus 9 uh, okay 2 minus 9 or I think the way they put that is yeah this is assuming that you put is the, if this is assuming that the target is greater than the value, you know. This is assuming that if the target minus the value, so for example in this case two minus nine is seven, okay. And if we don't have that, let me add that number here, you know. It means that key value let me add that number here key value is this will be is the key okay uh, followed by the difference but not the difference because if you store that different mm -hmm. followed by that Mm -hmm. followed by the value it means that hmm. 4 minus 3 e, uh, exist in our hash does 4 minus 5 uh, it's 4 minus 5 exist in our hash map that's negative 1 so no it does not then we add this 5 to our hash map hash map that's negative 1 so no it does not then we add this 5 to exactly if that different mm, is that different exists no does not then we add that okay if they do if they do exist okay uh what I want you to know is if they do exist, okay, which is now here, if they do exist, which is this difference, is this different exists, okay, uh, is this different exists? Uh, it means that I already have that value okay I only need to know is what is the position of that which is target minus value uh -huh. which is target minus exactly 
So here you say target minus value. You say, hey, do you do we have this target minus value? Yes. Uh, no, we don't have that. All right. Add this. Add this. Add this. If we already have that computation here, it means that we know what is the value of that. Okay. We know that we that we know what is the index. Our hash map, the value exists and its index is one. So now exactly the value exists. If the value exists, is because we already have that key value. Um, is because it already exists that and the difference okay and the difference in indicate the position and the difference indicate the position where we store that target and the different indicate the position of that exactly otherwise is return now the <clears throat> can you for off loop break For of break. You can say return. Is now the key or the target minus value followed by the current key. Ah, because it's nums. Nums dot entries. That's right. It's because now this is an iterable. That's right. But you say that this is a non defined error. Hmm. Another way to do this is by saying, well, let me now iterate through the maps here. Okay. Or iterate for this for each element here. Okay, what I'm gonna get is the key as the value. In this case, is the index and the value like that. And then what I'm gonna do is this. I want you to now compare if that doesn't exist in our hash map but the difference hey is the different doesn't exist here no they don't so add that add it to key value from that dot set followed by key and values mm -hmm. however if that exists 
okay I want you to now is a you can say is the let result which will be is null or an empty or an empty array okay I want you to do is this all we can do is similar for this it's like hey I want you to now is uh, attach the result result dot push with the with this followed by the key I think push on the array array dot push exactly it allowed to pass several items which is great uh, and that's it and after that you can just break this and we're gonna return is the result Exactly, nums dot entry. It's because I don't know how this actually is working, but in any case, it's for each of the value and key. Okay, I want you to do is this compare that. Okay. And then return the output there. Okay, now what happened is my logic here. So that if that doesn't exist, which means that hey, this different, this seven uh, x does not exist. All right, no problem. Add it. However, if on the next iteration, uh, exactly, if on the next iteration, you do have. Now we found our two, five, uh, it's four minus five exists in our hash map. That's negative one. So no, it does not. Then we add this five to our hash map but it's the way of how now I am is is because the way of how I'm storing is this value here. I am storing is the key, the index and the value. Okay, I'm storing is the key and the value. value and key exactly the value and the key the value is two and the key is that exactly the value is two and the key is this so I am storing is oh it's because I need to store is the value 
in oh okay in the key oh, okay because i oh, okay i need to store the value in the key here so when i query this result if this exists yes now this is the index therefore now when you find that okay you're going to uh you're gonna return here is now the so you're gonna is uh, actually do is result dot push of the subtle different the target minus value okay which is now is the because this number it has this number is indicating is the index is representing is the index okay this number is representing is the this number this different is representing is the value which is the index here and then you say key dot value dot get here followed by the key at that position and that's supposed to work as expected exactly oh my god this also will work this also work mm -hmm. oh my god this also works with this another solution here It's because now now our key is it'll be now our key will be the value and so we to compare it this we if we have this different is because that it represents is the index there <laughs> holy shit it's because you are now playing is with this so this representing is the index and this representing is the index as well So not only that. Oh, uh, okay. No, of course it's because it is the uh, at that position, the key value, the key value dot get which will contain is the value okay which will contain is the it's going to return this like this so return this which will contain is which will contain is the value that is the index okay it's because the way of okay it's because which information you want to store here i totally get it bro mm -mm -mm. i totally get it it's the information that you want to store in the hash what is the information that you want to store in the hash and from there all right you can move on there. Mm -hmm. what data do you want to store in the hash exactly what data do you want to store in the hash and when you submit that that'll be oh, oh my god oh my god it's like oh my god diff in hash so the Oh my God! I, oh, ho, 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 ho! But it all start is with what is the information that you want to store here? Exactly. What is the information that you want to store here? Mm-hmm. Okay. So challenge. what is what is the information you want you want to store in your 
hash map. Okay. What is the information you want to store in your hash map? Yep. What is the information you want to store in the hash map? Mm hmm. Or AKA, uh, what your hash map will represent or what data, what data your hash map will represent. Mm -hmm. Holy moly, bro. Holy moly. <laughs> okay, this is day one. And what a, what a day, bro. Day one challenge is this. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. It's like what data? Okay. What's the information you want to store in your hash map? I see it's the reflection. This is reflections. And then you got is this. What data, data or challenge Exactly, in challenge. Exactly, challenge is uh, arithmetic. Play, play with arithmetic. Mm -hmm. Play with arithmetic. Adds. Look at the opposite. Mm, that's part of the problem solving here. That's one of the things of the problem solving is like most of the time, oh, okay, with different lessons as a way to see things from different perspective, watch things from different perspective. Look at the opposite. Look at things with different or from different perspective. Exactly. Or as they have this uh, in brain, no, it was on mathematical, um, uh, brain, uh, mm, mm, holy moly. Um, Mine, wait, holy, um, brilliant. Brilliant. Foundational math. If this, rethink, rewrite, and redraw, thinking forward and backward. Mm -hmm. As well as this. So generalization, rethinking, reth rewrite, rethink, and redraw, thinking forward and backwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Foundational math thinking. So thinking forward and backwards here. Reason from results to cost. Exactly. Thinking forward and backwards. For some problems can be very effective. Thinking thinking backwards can be very effective. Despite being more hard to apply. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Generalizations. I'm very good at generalization. Rethink, re I'll think almost everybody else. Thinking forward and backwards. In this lesson, 
solve your problem, but you'll be able to think in different directions. Exactly. Thinking forward and backwards, bro. Thinking forward, forward, and backward. Mm-hmm. Enumerate all possible answers. This is thinking backward. Thinking forward is a lot of easy to work with true statements. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that'll be all for this video. Take care. Bye-bye.